Croesa, uh, Sandy, Sandy Club Adwe. Um, so I work for the Office of the Future Generations Commissioner. Um, so I'm going to, in a moment, be running through some slides on the topic of global responsibility through empathetic healthcare, which is our topic today. Um, there are going to be, I'm going to speak through the medium of English on Dunig Distisha Dweid, Oskisha, Govin, Question and Gamraig. If anybody wants to contribute in Welsh, that's really welcome too. Um, I'm just going to let everybody continue to drift in. Have we got most of the people that are coming? Um, so, before, um, so it's going to be an interactive workshop. Um, and I'm going to kick off in a moment by sort of just setting some context um, around global responsibility in the um, context of the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. And it, um, it's going to lead on, I hope, really nicely. I was thrilled um, with the number of sort of strong connections with um, what our opening speaker, Kalichi Noam, was saying earlier around those references to the wider system changes that we need to tackle some of the big problems we're facing into, for instance, climate change, and was particularly struck um, with the three things that he referenced that we're going to need to do, which is building empathetic global partnerships um, based on listening, trust, and racial justice. So I thought that was a really good thing for us to kind of hold on to and take forward into this session. So, before I start on uh, some slides, um, I think the other thing that really resonated for me in what Kalichi said was um, that empathy and compassion are so closely related. So, I, I, I think um, that's a really good place for us to start. And in thinking about how, I was thinking when I um, wrote this presentation, you know, what do we all need in order to be empathetic and, and to think about um, our global responsibility for empathy and that feeling of like empathy, but compassion and, and self-compassion. So um, before we start, I just wanted us all to take a moment to just sort of, if you'd like to close your eyes, just sort of connect with the ground, feel your feet on the ground or feel your chair beneath you. Just kind of take a moment to acknowledge kind of what's going on for you today and the context you're in. Take a few breaths. And then in a moment, what I'm going to invite everybody to do is to have a think and connect with something in your life that you're feeling gratitude for, either today especially or maybe more broadly in your life. Um, and then we're gonna, I'm going to invite you, if you'd like to, to share that with somebody, either that you're sat next to or if you feel the urge to move, which I always encourage, you could go and chat with someone else at a different table. Um, so, and then the second thing that I'd like you to think about and share is what's your superpower? So I really strongly believe that everybody has a, something unique to bring. And this is going to be a workshop that's not about me telling you stuff. It's going to be about us learning together and, and thinking up some solutions together. So um, I'd like you just to think, what do you bring? Everybody brings something unique. It might just be that you're, um, you really notice stuff. It could be something big or small. You might be aware people tell you you have a a contagious smile or laugh. Um, so all of those things, um, I think they're superpowers. So yeah, if you'd like to just turn to the person next to you or, or anybody in the room that's caught your eye and just uh, share a few thoughts on those themes. Deal. I'm going to come and talk to someone too.
Okay, I, I really don't want to stop everybody talking because it looks so lovely and you all look so happy and smiley. <laughs> but if, if I indulge my desire to let you keep chatting, then we'll never do the workshop. So I feel obliged to, to draw those lovely conversations to a close. Um, so I hope that you shared something um, that made you feel lit up. Oh, I'm going to have to do that if you can hear me clap once. If you can hear me clap twice. If you can hear me clap three times. Oh, I like that. I've not done that before. I just stolen that from somebody that did it in a, a thing I was in the other day. Dialg. Um, okay, oh no, this clicker. Oh, the clicker doesn't work. Julian, help. Oh, do I just have to do it? I'm disappointed the magic clicker doesn't work. Oh, could be a short presentation. Keep talking. You'll be fine. Ooh, oh, okay. thank you. I might need you on hand. How did you do that? Okay. Um, let's maybe stay until we've successfully changed a couple to Kevma. <laughs> okay, DL Julian. So um, what I'm going to chat with you about today is rooted in what we call the Sustainable Development Principle. So the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act came into being in Wales in 2015, and it embeds this responsibility in all of our public bodies and any organization spending public money, essentially, in Wales, to act in a manner which seeks to ensure that the needs of the present are met without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So that's the basic principle on which it's all founded. It's working. I think, I think I'm good. Deal. Thank you. Um, so... I'm going to just, I'm assuming sort of no knowledge of the act because we have such an international audience, which is super exciting. Um, so I'm sort of starting with the basics, but I'm going to skim, skim through it so that we get quickly to global responsibility. Um, but the act is, is based around these seven well-being goals that between them compile to, to form the sustainable, sustainable development principle. And one of the really important things about these goals is their interlocking nature, as shown in this diagram, that when we do this well, we consider them all at once. So we wouldn't, for instance, strive to achieve a prosperous Wales without um, thinking also about an equal Wales. Um, one of the things about these goals is that they do more than they say on the tin. So when you think about how we might look to create a prosperous Wales, this isn't just about the economics of it. It's also about having a low carbon economy and, and jobs that work for people. A resilient Wales is all about thinking about our biodiversity and how we can enhance it. And, and we go around. So one of the really innovative things about this act is um, the fact that culture is in there and that acknowledgement of the importance and the potential of culture um, to help us um, to deliver sustainable development. And then, of course, a globally responsible Wales, which I'm going to go on to talk about a little bit more. So these are the seven well-being goals that all of the public bodies in Wales have a responsibility to set out how they're going to achieve them in, in everything that they do. The Act also set out, sets out five ways of working. Um, so involvement is the one that's closest to my heart. This is what my role is about in our team. It's about involving people um, in the work that we do. And for public bodies, that's about involving people in designing solutions to problems. So that really, again, resonated with what Kalichi was saying this morning about empathy and storytelling and putting people and their individual experiences at the heart of everything we do. So I think that, to me, is what kind of sums up that involvement principle. So we also see the Act have a responsibility to work in an integrated way across different policy um, portfolios to think long term so how can we make decisions that consider you know people that will not be born for another 20 years collaborate across organizations between organizations and then also work in a preventative way um, and I've enjoyed meeting so far I feel like every other person at least in the room is from the University of South Wales um, public health course you're here in force <laughs> so we've already had lots of conversations with people about prevention and how important that is within a health a health set setting and so that's really core um, to the act um, so Wales is very much sort of on a world stage with this legislation, which is one of the reasons it's super exciting. Um, so quotes like this, we hope that what Wales is doing today, the world will do tomorrow. So um, that's, I guess, a, a call to those of you who, who might perhaps study here and then go and work elsewhere to take the spirit of this, this legislation and the innovation that Wales is doing with you. So what this legislation tries to do is find this kind of well-being sweet spot. So how can you develop policies that are like a win-win, no-brainer. So active travel, um, 
is a favourite for me. I used to work for an active travel uh, charity, so I should declare my interest. Um, but, you know, by enabling people to walk and cycle more or to move in other active ways, you know, you low pollution, it has massive public health benefits, um, and also you um, contribute to resilient communities, which uh, for those of you who were paying attention on the, the round slide, that was the, one of the other um, objectives, the wellbeing goals. So, you know, if pe more people walk and cycle and fewer people drive, people can um, have more conversations in the streets. You just build communities that kind of work better for people. So this picture, you've probably all seen a lot by now. It was knocking around a lot around the time when the pandemic sort of really started to hit hard. And I think it's still, you know, a picture speaks a thousand words, doesn't it? And, and today we could probably add, you know, another wave at the front there of the cost of living crisis. So I think to me, this just really depicts that sense of if we're always just focused on that first wave that's hitting us in the face, we're not focused on those bigger problems, but also looking at this again this morning just reflecting on how they're all connected as well because uh, you know that understanding that we have increasingly of how the cost of living crisis is intrinsically connected with the um, causations behind climate change as well and um, the fact that we haven't yet fully developed renewable energy and you know sustainable food systems that would tackle all those problems at once. So this is Sophie Howe on the left. She's the current um, Wellbeing of Future Generations Commissioner. She's been in post for nearly seven years and she's um, near the end of her term as Commissioner and will be um, recruiting, well, the Welsh Government is recruiting a new Commissioner who will start in January next year. So it's quite a transitional and exciting time for, the, for those working around the Act to look at what's changed and been successful. Um, so this slide, I thought, was quite good for us in terms of connecting back in with that thought of empathy. So um, basically these three circles, the gray one at the top, those are people who have lived previously and are now, um, have died. Um, and then the green dot are, is those who are living now. And then the orange dot depicts all of the people still to come over, I forget what time frame, but these are calculations that have been made by the UN. So the point really is the proportionate difference between the sizes of those blobs and for us to think about just how many people are still to come ahead of us and how much the decisions that we make now in terms of policies and, and how we use natural resources on the earth, for instance, would affect those people. And so that got me thinking about that interesting thing of empathizing with people who are not yet born and, and what might that mean to, to make policies in a way that does that. Um, so this slide just talks about underlying causes. So again, I think really uh, relevant from a public health perspective. So when we think of all of these um, issues that we're facing into as communities, as countries, things like forest fires, the mental health crisis, what's beneath the surface causing those problems? Um, for instance, you know, uh, are addicted to growth mindset um, in economies, um, biodiversity loss, etc. And one of the other things as I was sort of thinking about this slide was thinking, well, within that health context, just how many of those um, issues now when people will present perhaps um, with health issues, the interconnectedness. So for instance, as, um, we see more and more people now suffering from climate anxiety, etc. cetera. Um, so what's Wales been doing as a result of this legislation? What, what difference has it been making? Um, so, in the wake of the pandemic, what we've seen is the government really committing to a green and just economic recovery from the pandemic. Um, in Wales, we have a commitment to a transport hierarchy that puts um, active travel first and cars at the bottom. And a result of that has been Wales being, I think, the first country in the world to declare a moratorium on building new roads, which was something I was um, extremely pleased to see. We're creating a national forest in Wales. We have a climate ministry, which is quite a unique thing, where the environment, energy, housing, planning, and transport portfolios have all been integrated together, um, which, yeah, kind of is doing that integration principle. Um, so that's, yeah, been a very good step forward in terms of that commitment to integrate those policies. And we've also announced a net zero carbon and zero waste strategy in Wales. So these are all very much in line with that sustainable development principle. Um, so this is a movement that um, 
is also taking off in other countries. So whilst we're the first country in the world who has this legislation, there are a network of other institutions that are kind of looking at well-being of future generations, um, are either starting to develop legislation or are kind of embedding well-being economics within the way they work. So then we come to global responsibility, which is going to be the topic of our workshop. And in a few slides time, I'm going to start getting you all to have a chat about some of this. So in terms of what the globally responsible goal in the Act looks to do, essentially what it asks for us to do is that when we're taking any action to improve social, environmental and cultural well-being of Wales, that we make sure that that also has positive contribution to global well-being so that we're looking beyond just the impacts at home. Um, so the graphic over there on the right in pink, I've taken from a document that we've worked with the Wales Centre for International Affairs to produce together, which kind of just gives a lot more guidance for organisations about how to do global responsibility really well, because as a sector, we've been hearing and are very aware that maybe the global responsibility goal is one of the, it's been one of the hardest ones for the public bodies to understand and to get right, and they're just not as sure with that, what they're doing. Um, so this guide is really good. It sets out just a lot of concrete examples of what it might look like to be working in a globally responsible way. Um, so I won't read them all out, but you know, it kind of moves from you know, the basic starting point, you would hope is we stop doing harm. <laughs> you know, we just, we stop the stuff that really isn't helping, like producing landfill waste, um, using fossil fuels, doing our international recruitment in a, in a way that isn't good, um, having deforestation in our supply chains, etc. So we need to stop all of those things. Um, and then the next stage along would be kind of action to address some of those harms that are already done. Um, so upskilling our staff as global citizens, um, divesting our pensions from fossil fuels, for example, buying fair trade. So there are lots of actions that organizations can take that would be a step in the right direction. And then the even better place to get to is not just undoing the harms, but contributing actively to global well-being. So investing ethically, um, taking part in technology transfers, um, being actively carbon positive, not just uh, stopping our emissions, um, taking actions that would contribute to the restoration of nature, etc. So in 2020, um, Sophie Howe, the commissioner, made a series of recommendations in her report. Um, so this is something that we have a responsibility to produce every um, five years to sort of say how things are going. Um, so the recommendations in that included um, you know, that we should be demonstrating global citizenship in Wales. We need to ensure that Wales is a welcoming, safe and fair place for all making the right financial decisions, thinking about our supply chains, and making sure we use natural resources efficiently. So these are the kinds of things that we've been asking public bodies to look at. So if we just take a brief moment to think about where we are on all of this. So how globally responsible are we in Wales and where do we need to get to? This is a really handy tool. So I don't know if any of you have seen this before, Julian smiling. So I need to credit Oxfam Cymru at this point for putting this together. So this is called um, Donut Economics. And so this concept was started off by a wonderful lady called Kate Raworth, who's an economist. So the idea behind this is that on the left, this is the donut. Um, so the middle circle in the donut is um, the social floor, and the top circle, the outside of the donut, if you like, is the environmental ceiling. And where you ideally want your economy to be is in the donut ring, in the green bit, so that what you're doing is you are uh, managing to meet all of the social needs of the people in your community or place. So, you know, people have food, they have water, they have equal rights, they have access to good jobs and everything they need to live a good life. But you do that in a way that doesn't make you burst through all your environmental ceiling, which is stuff like, you know, soil depletion, climate change, carbon emissions, um, uh, you know, uh, depleting the water supply or polluting it. So. And then what we've got on the left, which really you'd have to go online and look at this in detail, and there's a link at the end. So I know you can't see all of the, the words very clearly, but essentially we're not doing terribly well. So we're, we're falling through our social floor in the middle. So all those red dots are where we're, you know, we're, we're not achieving equality as a society. People haven't got access to what they need. And then we're bursting through our environmental ceiling at the top. So all of those arrows pointing out, for instance, on carbon emissions, we're overshooting by 455% of where we need to be. So it's a really clever way of calculating 
um, how we're currently balancing um, what we're doing in Wales. So a couple more slides and then it's going to be over to you. So I just wanted to touch on the links between all of this and, and one of the main reasons we're here and that, you know, Wales and Africa Health Links is one of the ways in which Wales is demonstrating global responsibility. So if we looked in that guide that I, sh I showed you a bit of before around um, some of the recommendations, you know, doing things like international links and exchange to develop and share expertise, um, building that solidarity through equal partnerships, um, supporting projects that contribute to sustainable development and female leadership, um, and making sure that international work reflects the diversity of communities in Wales. So there's loads of really positive ways in which the, many of the projects represented here today are part and parcel of how Wales is um, growing its global responsibility. So that's fabulous. And then lastly, just wanted to leave you with a case study. So this is um, the Aspetti Gwynedd Green Group, who set up, um, I think, the year before last, because there was a group of people, it was started by a small group of junior doctors, and they were really um, energised and, you know, um, worried about climate change in the main, but also climate justice more broadly, and they wanted to look at how could they reduce their global impacts within the health board. And so they set up a Spetty Gwynedd Green Group and to look at things like uh, making their supply chain more sustainable. Um, they've looked at stuff like um, energy efficiency and renewable energy in the hospital and all sorts of different kind of things that they can do. Um, and they've also been instrumental in setting up the Green Health Alliance, which is something else I've got a link to at the end to kind of grow that movement beyond just their own hospital. So, pause for a breath. Um, so I'm going to now um, put some questions up. So I've kind of got three different questions that I thought we could have mini kind of quick fire discussions around the tables and if you want to you could move around between the tables between each question but the first one I just wanted to get everybody thinking I guess reflecting on some of what I've talked about and the links with what Kalichi talked about this morning so what does empathy mean to you personally in a global context and then the others are just kind of prompts so you know why does being globally responsible matter to you and you might want to think about those different sort of elements of sustainability, so the social, the environmental, the cultural. Uh, just thinking about that kind of get you thinking about what that personally kind of means to you. So how are we doing on time? Let's check. Maybe if we take up sort of eight to ten minutes, just have a little chat on your tables, and Julian and I will wander around. And, um, yeah, do you need any prompts?
Okay, how are you all getting on? That's been about eight minutes. Yeah. Still some big conversations going on. But I can see some eyes over here. I've got eyes there. Maybe you could all give me a clap. We'll do that again, shall we? Give me a clap if you can hear me. I don't think we need... Oh, maybe give me two if you can hear me. Yeah, yeah I love it. DR, thank you. Uh, so I was trying to wander without putting people off and just earwig a little bit and so lots of interesting themes coming out lots of, um lots of conversations about climate change and how we can really empathize with people that are on the the really harsh end of impacts of climate change some pockets talking about you know that global responsibility to share learning lots of very interesting conversations on the table in the middle talking about capitalism how do we challenge that so yeah lots of different ways in which this kind of theme resonates differently for people. So, so I'm kind of dissolved into coughing in the break there. So I'm glad it's not me doing most of the talking now. It's you guys. But um, okay. Um, so the second question I was going to pose you is kind of moving on then from thinking about what that means to us personally and how it resonates with us personally is to think about as healthcare professionals, how can you or do you bring the principles of global responsibility to your role? Or how will you? So many of you I know are studying or perhaps have come from um, direct healthcare into a public health setting. So however that question kind of makes sense for you in terms of, of what you're at and what you're doing. And again, the things below are just prompts that might help. Um, so what do you already do in your work? How do you model empathy? What would you like to do more of or stop doing? And what, what would you need to help you do this as well? So is there an aspect of global responsibility that you'd quite like to know more about? So lots of NHS um, organisations, for instance, are running um, training for their staff around global citizenship and eco-literacy and things. So just some starters for 10 there at the bottom to get again. If you would like to swap tables, I know that maybe feels socially weird or brave, but if you want to get up and bingo and sit down and talk to some new people, that's totally encouraged. And it's also fine if you don't. But um, So yeah, if I set you off again, chatting for about another eight minutes on that topic. And um, Julie and I are both wondering, so if you want any input or help, give me a shout. Oh, we have at least one wanderer. Well done, Tina.
So I, th I think we might shortly be joined by our other conference delegates looking for food. So I'm going to invite you to, to draw your conversations to a close. So I, I did wander around and rather than kind of break off people's conversations, mention to a few tables about this last third question, um, but I don't think I quite got to everybody. So I'd like to invite you, if you haven't already sort of pondered this third question, perhaps it's something we could take away with us to, to sort of think about after the fact. So just about what our institutions and organizations are doing that we're part of and, and whether or not we feel like they're being true to our what, what we would want to see around global responsibility. So some of that stuff might be around, you know, if you pay into a pension pot, you know, do we know if, if that pension money is being invested um, in fossil fuel, fuels and arms, those types of things. There might be some actions that we could go and think about how we can influence. Um, so thank you very much for throwing yourself into those conversations. I was warned that this was an echoey room and that it wouldn't work <laughs> if we got people to try and shout out. So I think it's been quite nice having group conversations and I hope that you've got something out of that. There were some lovely discussions happening as I went around the room about, you know, how we really embed empathy and how crucial empathy is going to be, not only to solving many of our health inequalities, but tackling some of those really wicked problems like climate change. Um, so lastly, just to say, yeah, there are a few links there to some of the bits and pieces I've mentioned and some useful guides, um, like Size of Wales' is deforestation toolkit and things that you can go and have a look at if you've been interested in some of these ideas and want to find out more and or take stuff back to influence your organization. Um, so yeah, look forward to chatting with some of you over lunch. Feel free to email me if you want to be more involved or find out more. Um, yeah. Dear Guardian.